Hey, what's up guys? Welcome back to another video in the Spigot series. In this video, I'll be teaching you how to work with items and inventories. So we're making a lot of progress with the series so far. So now we're going to move on to something that I think is a pretty interesting topic for your Minecraft plugins, um, which is how to create items, how to use items, and uh, using inventories as well, because a lot of plugins use that kind of stuff. You know, uh, one of the most basic things that you could do is give a player an item. And also, when we learn about inventories, we can learn to create custom GUIs or graphical user interfaces that are controlled through Minecraft inventories, because you can create custom inventories. So I already created a commands and a listeners package here. So we're going to go ahead and create a new command. This is going to be a menu command. So the purpose of this command here will be to create some items and then give them to the player. Okay, so items in bucket slash spigot are controlled to something called an item stack. Item stack. And then we'll import that from bucket. So let's go ahead and create a new item by doing item stack. Uh, we'll call it flower is equal to new item stack. So for this constructor here, it's asking for a material type and also an amount if you want to provide that as well. So we can say material by doing material dot. And these are enumerators provided by the material enum in Java. So you can choose pretty much any type of like item material within Minecraft. So um, literally anything should be on this list. Um, so we're going to go ahead and choose one of the flowers like flowering azalea, I guess. And then, like I said before, you can also specify the amount as it says here. So we can do like 16 to give them 16 flowers. But I think we'll just give them two flowers. How about that? So now we've created a new item here just by simply creating a new item stack. So what we can do is actually add it to the player's um, inventory, right? So right now we have command sender sender. So we actually need to get a player from this. So we're going to go ahead and control X cut that. And we'll do if sender instance of player player. So if the sender is a player, get the player variable. And now we can do player dot get inventory. So this will get the player's inventory. So you can do control Q to see what that does. Uh, gets the player's inventory, the, the inventory of the player. This is also containing the armor slots. And then you can do dot. And there's a bunch of different methods that you can do upon an inventory uh, object. And I, I uh, encourage you to play around with all these different methods here. I can't really go through all of them in this first video here. But one of the most basic ones that you can do is either set item to set the item in a specific uh, slot of the inventory or add item. So we're just going to go ahead and add the item. Oh, we need to put the item back. So we're going to add this flower item to their inventory by doing player.getInventory.addItem. Oops. And then we'll pass in flower, just like that. So right now with this add item method, it's simply adding the, the item stack to the first available slot in the inventory. Um, so that's you know pretty simple. If you want to read into that, you can do that. Um, but if you want to set into a specific slot, you can use set item. So dot set item. And then now for the index, uh, well, and then now if you do control P, it's asking for an index and then an item, the one that you want to set for that slot, right? So if we do control Q here, it'll tell you exactly how this works. So stores the item stack at the given index of the inventory. So index is 0 through 8 refer to the hot bar, 9 through 35 refer to the main inventory. And then counting up from nine to the top left corner of the inventory, blah, blah, blah. So we really care about zero through eight and then nine through 35, because that's the main parts of the inventory. 36 through 39 refer to the armor slots, if you want to do that. And then index 40 refers to the shield slot. Okay. Um, so yeah, let's set it into the first slot of the hotbar. So since calling dot add item would probably just add it to the first hotbar slot, let's prove this works by doing the second hotbar slot. So that should be one, right? Because it starts at zero. So it would be one and then flower. So this should add a two flowers to the second hotbar slot, okay? So I'm going to go and compile this, and I'll see you on the server in two seconds here. All right, everybody, I'm on the server, so I'll do slash menu. That's how we know that it works, and if we take a look at it, we just see that, just ignore this one, that was a test. We see that we have the flowering azalea item, right? So now it would be cool if we can customize it, so we can give it some custom, maybe a custom name, some lore, um, an enchantment, stuff like that. So how do we do that? Let's go ahead and make a new item so we could test this out with. So we'll do item stack food is equal to new item stack and we'll do some how about we do some beef i like me some beef so we'll do 16 we'll do seven beef i, I like that seven beef and so now if you want to customize the item even further you can do that using the item meta class so item meta that's actually an interface but you get the point so item meta food meta is usually how you would name that and then you could do food dot get item meta so this will give you the item meta of the item that you just created or the item stack that you've obtained so now with food meta, you can call a bunch of different methods like um, get lore, uh, get enchants to get information about an item, but you can also set information. So you can do um, set display name, for example. That's one of the most basic ones that you can do. So set display name, and we could say something like um, yummy food. And we can even make it color if we want to. So we could do something like 
chat color dot red yummy food make sure we import chat color so that will appear when we hover over the item something else that you can do is also add um, item lore and so lore is going to be the information that comes up under this the display name so uh, right now there is no lore on this item but uh, what's a what's an item with lore let me see if i can show you guys um here we go so for this painting here we have lore it says painting and this says skull and roses christopher zetter strand two by two that is the lore of the item. So under the display name, you have the lore. Okay, so how can we add lore to our item specifically? So you can do food meta dot add lore or set lore, I think. Yeah, set lore. If you do control key here, it's asking for a list of strings. So that's pretty simple, right? You just give it a list of strings. They can be colored if you want to. Um, so let's go ahead and create a new list of strings. Um, lore, we'll call it, or we'll call it food lore because you may have more than one item right so let's not get it confused and now we could just do a new array list there we go and we could do food lore dot add and we could add whatever lines of uh, text we want to so we could say this is the best food subscribe to cody simpson wow i think that's very cool so now that we have this list of strings here we can add it to the lore of the item by doing food meta dot set lore and then pass in food lore and then after that, we can add one more thing. There's a bunch of things that you can add with food meta, as you saw. There's a bunch of methods that you can call upon food meta. But one thing you could do is set an enchantment. So food meta dot enchant, and we could do add enchant. And you can do, so it's asking for an enchantment. So usually when you see something like this, uh, chances are it's asking for a enum. So we can do each enchant dot, and it's already giving you suggestions here, which is very nice. So these are all the enchantments that are provided by um, Minecraft. So you can choose any of these if you want to. So you can do knockback. So we'll do knockback. And then we could set um, level 1000 if you want to. And then now level 1000 is like beyond like the normal vanilla range for an enchantment, I believe. So what you want to do is enable true for ignore level restriction. So we do control Q to actually clarify that. Um, this indicates the enchantment should be applied ignoring the level limit. So <laughs> pretty self-explanatory. So we're going to set true because we have a limit of, or we have a level 1000, which is surely beyond the limit. Um, but there we go. So now we've added a display name, a lore, and an enchantment to our item. So you always have to do this at the end. Never forget. Add the meta. So we have to do food dot set item meta food meta. So even though we first obtained this food meta object from the food item stack, at the end, at the end, once we are done editing the item meta, we have to add it back by doing food dot set item meta. Never never forget that. Okay, um, that's very important. And then now we can add it to the inventory. So we could do player dot get inventory dot um, add item, and we'll just add it to the first available slot. So food. There we go. Okay, so let's go ahead and test this out real quick so we can see what it looks like. Okie dokie, I am back on the server now, so we're going to do slash menu. And there we go, so we get our 7 beef, and it looks awesome. It says yummy food, that's the name, and it's in red because we set the chat color of red. And now we also see that it has an enchantment level of 255, which, I mean, we set 1,000, and we said to ignore the limit. Um, but I guess the hard limit will be 255, that's interesting. Um, and then now we have the lore. So it says, this is the best food, you want to eat me, subscribe to Cody Simpson. That's a very good idea, make sure you do that if you're not already. But yeah, as you notice, the lore is going to be purple by default for any item stack that you have. That's just how it works. So if you want it to look white or any color that you want or any styling that you want, just make sure to use chat colors, okay? So that will override that, you know, uh, styling for the lore, okay? So now up to this point, we've learned how to create custom items for our Minecraft plugins, for our Minecraft servers, which is pretty awesome if you ask me. Hopefully you guys are finding this pretty interesting here. Um, so what I want to do now is show you guys different ways we can work with inventories because when you're working with items you're also going to be working with inventories as you know because you have to get the inventory to put the item in the inventory um, so i think it's important that you also know some of the basic things that you can do with inventories within uh, minecraft so let's go ahead and create a basic listener so that we can listen for whenever um, a player does something with an inventory and i'm just going to give you a basic overview and then in the next episode i'll show you guys how to create custom inventories which will allow you to make custom user interfaces as i mentioned before all right, so we've created our inventory listener here. We have this on inventory click event being listened to. So if we do control Q, it says this event is called when a player clicks in an inventory. Uh, because inventory click event occurs within a modification of the inventory, not all inventory related methods are safe to use. Um, okay, pretty self-explanatory here. So, so with this event, you can get different information about the click type, um, the inventory. So you can get the inventory that was clicked and then do stuff with it. You can get the action. 
You have another method for getting the inventory. I don't really know the difference here. Um, but you can also get the current item. So this is the item that was clicked on, if there is one. Um, and then you can also get the cursor. You can also... And you should be able to get the player as well. Yeah, here we go. So you can get who clicked. So get who clicked will give you a human entity. But this is something that can, can be converted into a player object, okay? So we, we may want to do something like this. So we could say if e dot get who clicked get who clicked is an instance of player then we'll just provide player just very similar to how we do it with commands so just to make sure that the human entity is a player check it and then cast it to a player automatically okay so let's just make a very simple listener that's going to make it so that whenever you click our our flower it's going to say you click the flower and then if you click the beef it's going to say you click the beef if you click some other random item, it's going to say you click something else. So we can do that by getting the currently clicked item. So var .clicked item is equal to e.getCurrentItem. So whenever you click an inventory, it will trigger the event, and then you should be able to grab the item that was clicked. So now we have to determine which item we clicked on. There's different ways you could do that. You could check the type of the item. You could check the name of the item. You can check the metadata of the item, which is something that I'll be showing you later in the series. Um, there's different ways you could do that. So we'll just go ahead and do the easiest way, which is by checking the type. So we can go ahead and do clicked item dot get type and do equals material dot flower, flowering azalea. There we go. So if the type of the clicked item is a flowering azalea, we can pretty much assume that that's our special little item. So we can go ahead and send the player a message telling them you clicked the flower. Awesome. And then else if, um, if they click something else, like the beef. So if they click the beef, then we can do player dot send message. You clicked the beef. And of course you can make this a switch expression if you want to, um, but I'm not gonna do that in this case. And then for otherwise, if it's not any of those things, uh, then you can say you clicked something, something else. And then if we want to, we could actually just tell them what they clicked on just to make it a little more interesting here. So we could go ahead and do clicked item dot get type and this is going to return a material, so we have to convert that to a string. And we should be able to do two string to accomplish that. There we go. Okay, so this is a pretty simple event listener here. We're just listening for the inventory click event. Whenever the event is triggered, we're going to get the item that was clicked, get the player who clicked the item, and also determine what type of item it was. And, you know, based on the type, we'll send them a message, okay? So let's go ahead and test this out just to see what happens. All right, I'm back on the server now, so we can test this out by, well, first of all, we need our items, right? So we'll do slash menu. There we go. So now we have our beef and our azaleas. So if we go ahead and click one of these empty slots, it'll say you click something else and it'll say air. So that is it converting the material to a string as we just did in a second ago. So that part is working. But now if we click the beef, we get you click the beef. And then if we put it down, it says you click something else air. Because technically when we're holding it, um, it's no longer in that slot. So when we click the slot again to put it down, we are now clicking an empty slot, which is air. And so if we pick it up, we click the flower. If we put it down, you click something else. So even though this is a basic tutorial, this is a pretty basic example here. So let me make this a little more complex. Let's make it so that when you right click the flowering azalea, it gives you a diamond or something like that. So there's actually two ways you could do this. You could do e dot is right click or is left click, or you can do get click and then is right click or is left click. So uh, I think obviously you want to do the more simple approach. So let's do e dot is right click. And if it's a right click, we can go ahead and do clicked item dot set type material dot diamond. And while we're at it, let's also update the metadata of the item. So we're going to go ahead and do uh, item meta uh, clicked, or let's just say diamond meta, whatever you want to call it. Clicked item dot get item meta, diamond meta dot set display name. We're going to do chat color dot, uh, we'll do aqua and we'll say diamond. And then you always have to remember, set the meta background to the item. So we can do clicked item dot set item meta diamond meta. There we go. So now the item should be updated and uh, let's go ahead and find out if it works. Okie dokie, we're back on the server now. So let's test it out. So we'll open our inventory, we'll left click, still works same as before. We're going to right click, same as before. And then if we left click beef, same as before, easy peasy. But then if we right click our flowering azalea, it, we get a diamond. So awesome. So that's pretty cool, right? Now we've made it so that whenever you click an item in our inventory, we're able to detect that. But also when you right click an item specifically, we're able to convert it to a whole different type of item and also change the metadata. So it says diamond as the display name. So, so that's pretty much all I want to show you guys for this episode here. 
Um, this was a pretty simple one, but I hope you learned a lot. In the next episode, I'll show you guys how to create custom inventories, which is another really cool thing that you can do for Minecraft plugins that will end up being a very important feature. So stay tuned for that, everybody. If you learned something new, hit the like button. So that's it for this video, everybody. I really hope you learned something new. If you liked the video, please hit the like button. And if you want to see more, hit that subscribe button. Make sure to also check the description below for important links to code and other resources. But also really important, join our Discord. We have a big community of over 5,000 programmers, and it's a place where you can find new friends or get help on any code that you're stuck on. If you want to support what I do on this channel, please consider hitting the join button below. And this will allow you to support my channel for as low as $1 a month, but there are different tiers to choose from if you want to. For anyone that becomes a member on my channel, you get a special rank on my Discord server, early access to new videos, and you can just see yourself on the screen right now. So if that sounds cool to you, feel free to join. If you don't want to, that's fine. If you can't, that's okay too. I really just appreciate you watching the video anyway. Thank you so much. And that's it. Peace.